Good morning and welcome to La Brainwashed. I'm your host, Angry Hoops fan, and how did the Lakers lose to the Grizzlies, who are missing two of their best players? I don't know how, but I can't pretend that I'm upset because it further lends evidence to some stats I've been working on that I'm going to share with you now. The Lakers are now 13-13, and 13, a 50% team with the GOAT, supposedly. Along with the GOAT, you have other all-stars and franchise players and former NBA champions. Even with that lineup, the person toted as the best player ever currently playing can't get that team past 50%. That is an enigma in itself, but... That's not what we're focusing on today. As you probably already know, LeBron, the softness, James, has already missed quite a few games this season, which has caused announcers to repeatedly say things and TV analysis to repeatedly say things like, can LeBron's return save the Lakers tonight? The answer is usually no. Which leads us to the stats I want to share. Not only are they a 50% team, but they actually are as good without LeBron or better than when he's playing. And even Skip Bayless isn't bringing this up, which I don't understand. Maybe that's crossing the line. You may have noticed over the years they've told him to tone down on the truth meter with LeBron James because he's the face of the NBA and the NBA wants him to be successful despite all of his characteristic failures. So I will bring the stats to you. 12 out of 26 games so far. The Lakers have either won without LeBron James or lost while LeBron James was playing. That means they are as good without him as they are with him. But nobody's talking about that. Despite all of LeBron's inability to lead this team, the narrative is always, will LeBron's return be what it takes for the Lakers, and no one's looking at the fact that the Lakers start to come together when LeBron is not playing. He is what's causing the chemistry not to happen. And this morning, after they lose, and LeBron has one less turnover than Westbrook, what's the title on the screen? LeBron hits his 100th career triple-double. Way to pave over the ugliness. Way to make sure that LeBron still looks good when he stinks like shit. If you're not familiar with the stats, let me catch you up. Okay, they started the season losing to Golden State. LeBron played. They then lost to Phoenix. LeBron played. Then they managed to beat Memphis. LeBron played. San Antonio, they won. But James did not play. The softness had a sore ankle. Here we go. Already starting to sit out games. OKC. How the hell did you lose to OKC? James didn't play again. Sore ankle. Cleveland, they won. James played. Rockets, they won. Oh my God, the Rockets. James played. They played the Rockets again. James played. OKC, they lost. James is out now with a new injury. Abdominal strain. And yet this guy is making gym workout commercials while analysts are coming up with excuses for why his body's breaking down at the age of 36, by, which, by the way, is the same age as Chris Paul, who is smaller and less physically dominant looking than LeBron James and is leading his team to the finals again, it looks like. But in LeBron's case, oh, you know, he's 36, poor thing. I personally was in my prime playing basketball in my mid-30s. LeBron James... Um, 36, and everyone's making an excuse for him. Michael Jordan, 35, had just won his sixth title. But let's continue. Portland, uh, they lose. James is out. Hornets, they win. James is out. Heat, they win. James is out. By the way, Westbrook was amazing in that game, starting to come into his own. In that loss against Portland while James was out, Davis only played seven minutes, so that hardly counts because Davis is clearly the most dominant player on that team when he has his shit together. Timberwolves, they lost. James was out. The Spurs, they won. 
James is still out with the abdominal strain. Bulls, they lose. James is out. Bucks, they lose. James is out. Now, the Bulls and the Bucks are both really good teams. So, let's keep that in mind. Celtics, loss. James returns uh, to that game. James is in, and they lost. Detroit, they win. That's the game where uh, LeBron has that really dirty elbow in the eye and gets uh, suspended. So he was only in part of that game that was a win. Uh, the Knicks, they lose. James is out because of the uh, suspension. Indiana, they win. James is in. The Kings, they lose. James is in. And James is responsible for that loss. God damn, he was dreadful. He showed us multiple times how he can't make the shot when it matters. That was the triple overtime game. And then they played the Pistons again and managed to win. Then they played the Kings and won, but James was out. Why was he out again that time? Oh, that was the COVID thing. Clippers, they lost. James was in. Celtics, they won. I don't know how they managed to win that game. James was in. And now they lost to Memphis, and James was in. As I said, that makes 12 out of 26 of those games the Lakers winning with James out or losing with James in. That makes this a 50% team with and without LeBron James. Meaning, what could happen if LeBron set out the rest of the season? I mean, this team starts to get it together when LeBron's out for a few games in a row. Why? Couldn't a team that has Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, Carmelo Anthony, Tucker, Bradley, Monk, and we're not even talking about Dwight Howard again, even though he was instrumental in that bullshit bubble uh, championship that they got. Dwight Howard is a bruiser. He plays his role as a bruiser very well, and it works effectively when you're trying to break down the other team strategically. Rajon Rondo. Rondo is a multi-time champion, and yet... As soon as he's on LeBron's team, he's no help. This is a star-studded cast. They should be able to beat other NBA teams more than 50% of the time. And I think that LeBron is blocking their chemistry. He's not a leader. He doesn't have the mental strength to be a leader. If anything, he's taught us the secret of the blame game. Always have someone around to blame. But, but... But look at LeBron's stats. He's playing so well. He exploded for this and he exploded for that. Did he? Let's take a closer look, shall we? Because LeBron James has the most uncontested shots of any player in the NBA right now. It's a cakewalk. It's like they're handing him his points. Right now, LeBron is averaging 25 points a game at age 36. When Michael Jordan got his last championship, ring. He was about to turn 36 and he was averaging 29 points a game. And that was without the aid of this inflated three-point game that they play nowadays. He just scored through actual artistry and will and determination. You have to go to Michael Jordan at the age of 39 coming out of retirement for the third time to get his average down as low as LeBron James is right now when he is supposedly the GOAT. I'm gonna harp on this age thing for just a little bit longer before moving on. It's only fair because the analysts for the NBA are clearly paid to make you think LeBron James is better than he is because they're constantly saying, it's amazing what he's able to accomplish at this stage in his career. It's amazing what he's doing at this age. What are you talking about? As if it's strange for 35 and 36 year old athletes to be accomplishing things. Michael kept getting better as his career went on despite age. There weren't excuses being made for him. And Michael was like eating McDonald's and stuff. I thought that that must have been just commercials back then, but then I read the books and I watched some of the films. That dude was actually eating that crap and still accomplishing what he was accomplishing and still winning the scoring titles and the MVP titles and all NBA defensive team, picking up the toughest assignments, all of that. Both sides of the court playing all the games of the season. None of this, I need to rest. I'm only mentioning Michael because you guys have the nerve to 
call this whiny, excuse-needing bitch LeBron James the GOAT. So let's move on from Michael and let me throw some other information at you. Tim Duncan was 37 and 38 when he played against LeBron James, which means that Tim Duncan was 38 when he beat LeBron James. Manu Ginobili, Duncan's teammate, was 36 and 37 in those same years. Dirk Nowitzki was 33 when he defeated LeBron James. And yet these analysts are talking like LeBron James is playing past when he should have retired because how can anyone do this at his age? And let's not forget what this no-name kid did to LeBron James. You guys remember any time in Michael's history where some no-name kid shut him down in the finals? Let me throw some more information at you. Michael was the second oldest person on his team. Dennis Rodman was 37. Bill Winnington, 35. Steve Kerr, 33. Ron Harper, 34. Scotty Pippen, 33. Bushler, 30. Longley, 30. Kukoc, 30. And yet somehow today's analysts are calling the Lakers geezers. The old geezers. We can't expect the old geezers to play defense. Excuses, excuses, excuses that don't hold up when you look at the old warriors of the NBA. Now hold on, I'm not done because man, they've made a big deal about how old the Lakers are. Okay, let's look at the actual ages of the Los Angeles Lakers. Westbrook is 33, Davis is 28, Tucker is 21, Bradley is 31, LeBron is 36, Monk is 23, Ellington 34, you gotta get all the way down to Anthony and Howard to get to 37 and 36. This Lakers roster is like Young Bucks compared to the championship roster of Michael's 1998 Bulls. So what is with this never ending complaining about the age? And how about, and I, I gotta go back to LeBron at the beginning of the season. I have always wanted to say something about this. When he tweeted, keep talking about my squad, our ages, do me one favor, please, please keep the same narrative and energy. That's all I ask. The nerve, the nerve for you to talk trash after going out and recruiting a bunch of all-stars, former champions, franchise players, and then talking trash as if you are personally going to do something. You have to get carried by other people, and then you're going to talk trash? By the way, um, so far, people are justified in talking trash. And it's not because of age. It's because of poor leadership. And people always like to talk about uh, Michael's incredible cast. No one wanted Dennis Rodman at the time. Are you aware of that? No one wanted Dennis Rodman. It had to be made to work, and it was a huge risk. Do you think it would work with LeBron James having Dennis Rodman on that team? Not a fucking chance in hell. Because LeBron James is mentally weak and not a good leader. He could not have handled Dennis Rodman. And I doubt if Dennis Rodman would have put up with LeBron James's fucking prima donna bullshit. So, but we all know what would have happened. That would have meant that uh, Dennis Rodman... Uh, hit the highway and got booted like so many of LeBron's teammates. Oh, by the way, how are LeBron's ex-teammates from last year that weren't good enough to carry him? Oh, that's right. They're all kicking ass. LeBron's the only goat I know who makes his teammates worse than they were before they joined him or ends the careers of people who are already doing well.